So we're considering the following uh, topological string setup, which had a d1 and a d4. Then on the d1, we have ADHM quantum mechanics. So I have n of these, k of these. So the Lagrangian is, we have, we have x on the so x and y in GLN, and I map from CK Cn, J from Cn, Zk, and a gauge field. And this Lagrangian um, plus. So this is the ADHM quantum mechanics we get by studying this system. And this C is a parameter which controls the non-commutativity of this thing. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. I keep getting, yeah. Never been quite sure of what the correct convention is in the topological string. So. So what are the operators? Uh, of, of ADHM quantum mechanics. Well, these are, so gauge invariant functions on the set of x, y, i, j, such that x, y plus, there we go, j, i plus e times the identity is zero. So you can enumerate all of these operators a basis for n really, really large is given by products of well, We have cap over here an I. I. X or X's as Y's and J. These are a uh, GLK indices. So here we're, we're taking the product of these n by n matrices. So what's i is like for each index, little i, this is a vector, and I hit it with a bunch of these matrices, and then I hit it with a covector. So these are like some obvious things you will write down. And it turns out that everything is of this form. The reason is, so let's try to imagine a more general gauge invariant thing. So any other gauge invariant thing, you can use this relation to recast it in this form. So for instance, if the ordering here was different, 
you can use this relation that I'll pick up at JI, and that will be a product of two things like that. So, so as a vector space, The, the, the large N operators are symmetric algebra of GLK join two variables, where this EIJ, Z1 or Z2, yes, Those two however as um, an algebra it's uh, it's different it has a, some some interesting non commutative algebra So let's figure out some relations. So firstly, EIJ C1, simplest one is EIJ EJK is EIK. So this is very easy to see. This is, this is just a relation that has GLK currents. This comes from the fact that like, I because because these guys have canonical commutation relations. So, you know, in principle, you can compute all kinds of relations in this algebra, but one that turns out to be basically to determine everything is if these indices i, j, we can write down one or two more, sorry. So e, i, I, J, K, L are distinct. E, I, J, Z, 1, E, K, L, Z, 2 is E, I, L, E, E, J. So the, this is one where the product of two generators is something quadratic in the generators. Let's, so the reason I'm writing these down is that we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna see them from the point of view of cardinal duality in a minute. So how does that one come up? Well, we'll just look at the expressions. So I'll, I'll write down this expression, but I let, say, alpha, beta, be GLN indices. So what, what we wanna show is um, J, J, X, J, alpha, X, alpha, beta, I, beta, I,
you want this to be on the right hand side um, J L alpha I alpha I Beta. So this is the relation we want to hold. So how do we do this? Well, since we're assuming that the i, j, k indices are all distinct, we're never going to be able to contract them. They all commute with each other. So the only wick contraction that's going to hold is between these guys. So the point is that x alpha beta y gamma delta is delta delta gamma beta. Because these guys satisfy canonical commutation relations. Therefore, if we put plug this these delta functions in, in this contraction, we're going to get rid of the x and y and replace them by delta alpha delta, delta gamma beta. And if you look at the formula, that is what you will find. So this was a delta. Okay, so if you just stare at this for a minute, the same as the right hand side. Okay, so this is really, really elementary. So let's do the, the, the casual dual version. So we have a gauge field, which is a one form without dz1, dz2 components. And the Lagrangian is integral dz1, dz2, half ABA plus one third A cubed plus their terms, and these other terms, come from the non-commutativity. So these, particular, these other terms, in this particular calculation, if we're going to do, the other terms are not going to matter. So we'll consider. The universal line defect. Which we can place at zi equals zero. Where some operators say T i j K L are coupled to del z1, k del z2, k a i j. So following the kind of computations we did before, 
we want to show that these guys, these TKLs are forced to satisfy these kinds of relations. This commutes to PIL zero zero EKJ zero zero. And also we all want the really classical one. <clears throat> so these relations will match what we find in the ADHM quantum mechanics. Okay, so any, any questions? <laughs> Also to get rid of the KK modes, right? Because if you put the 2D system on a cylinder, you would have ADHM quantum mechanics with the tower of KK modes. So my question is: so is it possible to interpolate uh, between the 2D solar and the far of the ADHM quantum mechanics algebra? Well, so the first difficulty is that the um, the two, yeah. The n equals four chiral algebra, like the framing, to be anomaly free, the framing node has to be k slash k. It can't be k. So we could only, we could only possibly find the k slash k version of ADHM quantum mechanics. And in that case, you'll have to do something to get rid of the kk modes. So probably, probably something like, if you look at this, this chiral algebra, there's a construction called the Zhu algebra. Ju, yes, that hates you, which takes a chiral algebra and produces an associative algebra built from like the zero modes. So, radiation algebra is smaller than the world? Yes, because the, ADA, the uh, 2dn equals 4 algebra, uh, there will be, each of these generators will have an extra index that runs over integers. So it seems like the after relation for insulin string equals string is going to be the ADHM algebra. Yes, once you have the non-commutativity. So can I think of the uh, small and equal to the parallel device double copy of the ADHM algebra? Why a double copy? Because uh, essentially the after relation just uh, gets rid of the top, like a closed string part, and we only get the open string. Or the KK modes are extra. The KK modes are extra than that. It's like a, this big tower. It's like a whole infinite tower. I mean, what you can do. I mean, if you um, if you study the n equals four chiral algebra, and you turn on the non-commutativity in the transverse direction, so that means that you to the BRST operator, you you include the term of like that, I think. This, this is the analog of having the turn Simon's term where I integrate the gauge field in the mechanics. For the 2D chiral algebra, the analog will be including this term with the RST operator. So if you do that, then um, lots of the closed string states collapse. So it looks a bit more like it's purely open string. There, there are still some closed string states. It doesn't entirely collapse here, but it's, lots of things go away. So in 
learning the algebra for the list of mechanics. Uh, there were no age bar patterns coming from interactions of the uh, key biopart. Um, H bar being which coupling? The string coupling or the non commutativity parameter? Uh, I mean, the, the two parameters. When you compute contractions? Right, so I was, I was being very lazy about it. So here, when I compute these contractions, I, I could have put the, a gauge parameter for the, um, like, like a coupling constant for the quantum mechanics system in, in, in with each contraction. And when I'm computing from the other side, there's going to be some string coupling constant. And these are related in some way, which I can never keep straight. So maybe I'll quickly sketch this computation without all the details, because I think the details there's some, uh, some, maybe you can tell me if you want me to do the details. But so, so for this one, it's uh, this is not like the kind of easy part. So I look at this diagram. <coughs> And I ask, does this, here I'm put the gauge fields, and here I'm coupling to T00. Does this diagram have a gauge anomaly? Well, if I, if I apply a gauge transformation here, I'm going to put DC, and I integrate by parts, I put this over here, and then I get this kind of thing. So I get the integral over the line of a c t zero zero. This, and this, so this kind of computation will happen. Will always happen. Like these kind of tree level computation is a very universal thing. And for the anomaly to be cancelled, I look at this one and I say, well, I, I vary one by a gauge transformation d c. And here I'm doing a path order exponential. So I pick up a boundary term. I pick up a boundary term where those guys coincide. And here I'll get integral C A T zero zero T zero zero with with some Lie algebra factors. So for the anomaly to cancel, this relation must hold because this guy must cancel this guy. This is the very simplest one that always happens. So, so let's look at the next one. So if we, we consider this diagram, here I couple my t0,0. Zero zero. If we do a gauge variation, which is DC, then like an explicit computation, tells us that the anomaly is um, the integral over OR del z one a del z two c t i j zero and 
here we have I J L K. So there's two parts to this computation. The hard one is you have to compute the amplitude of the Feynman diagrams and the analytic factors. The easy part is the Lie algebra indices, which you can do by, by replacing this by a planar diagram. Just looking at it for a minute. So because this is the anomaly, so this must be cancelled. So to be anomaly free, Cancelled by here I have del z one a coupled to t one zero <laughs> so the boundary term of this involves the commutator of these two things which must cancel with this Space. The boundary of that involves like integral of one a two c. Um, T i j one zero b k l zero one. So, comparing the coefficients, this guy must be a multiple of that with some factor. With some so this is, in general, how you, the rules to commute the universal algebra, and we've checked that in this case, we've checked the first couple of relations, and they match, the algebras are the same size. You might hope this is enough to check the algebras are isomorphic. That requires a little bit of algebra, but it turns out that these relations are enough. Okay, any questions? So let me finally, like before, uh, well, I wanted to give a few kind of open problems, but um, before I do that, I wanted to say a little bit about um, the role of the back reaction in this example, which was something I didn't really understand at first. So. To, to think about the back reaction, we should go back to the 60s story. Now we call we we call we we introduce some extra lines. We call it you know, like this, where this guy is the field source by the brain. So, if you want to think more algebraically about what this means, this means the equivalent way of saying it is that we formally introduce a new element, call it N, to the chiral algebra. And we just declare that the field of sources is a field source by the brain.
We also would declare that n is in the center. So if we did this, we just, suppose we just decided, well, my universal carrier algebra, I will declare it as a, instead of having these t's, which I knew we must have, I also want to say that it has a new element, which is in the center, I'll call it n. Then the diagrams you will study in the universal carrier algebra are the diagrams we mentioned, which produce the back reaction. are competing the OBE in the larger algebra. So the reason I mention this is that um, in this 5 story, there already is such an element. So, even though I haven't explicitly talked about the back reaction at all, it's implicitly there because there is an element of the algebra where, the, where if I look at stick a propagator at the end, I'll get the field source by the brain. So, in 5D, we let n be the element some j i, so j j i j. So I eats the current for the GL1 action. Right, so this is the identity matrix in GLN. And the field um, sourced by N by this operator. is equal to the field source by the brain. <clears throat> so what this tells us is that if we study the universal carrot algebra, it has a special element, which is in the center. So, so I don't think this is Carol. So the universal associative algebra which is generated by it's kind of e i j e to the L has a central element and when we study the theory with n d1 brains the central element acts by n I just want to make the point that the back reaction is implicit in this construction. Any questions? Uh, 
So there are like millions of constructions to which one can try to apply this kind of story. Um, Maybe I'll just mention one or two that I think are interesting. So often like the cleanest examples tend to be where you're studying quantum mechanics or a 2D chiral theory, because then the algebraic structure you're studying is pretty standard. So here you could have or two cross C2, but with configurations of D1, D3, D5, which will give you different quiver quantum mechanics. So Jivon was, Jivon was studying one of these examples where there was a D3 perpendicular to the D1, giving you a module. Um, you could also take it to the D3 parallel to the D1, where you get a different, system, different quantum mechanical system. Take the weight the oh, at the after relation, yes. Uh, but if we also take the large end and the I, the identity matrix, like the trace of the identity matrix goes to the uh, ba, 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 ba. I think what's happening is Right, so you said you're saying that like you have X, Y plus J I is the identity, and equals C. So taking the trace, we have N times Isn't that, so when we take the trace, we, we pick up a, there's some, there's some factor of N hanging around, isn't there, once we take the trace? Yeah, like if you take the trace of the identity, you get that. Right, so that like, yeah, so that's, that's, that's why it's like some that's why that's why that's zero. Oh. Um, like, isn't this relation the reason why, like, say, C is 1? In the theory with n d1s, this operator is equal to n? <clears throat> uh, 
probably there's something to be said about the scaling this constant correctly or something. I mean, if you include this constant, this is this operator divided by the non-commutativity parameter, and that could be very large. So there's more like, like infinitely many things one can study. In this example, there's more quantum, quantum mechanical things. You could say I can take or two or cross or cross z cross c. For example, d one d three. And in this direction, I could have a super potential like z to the k. As an example. Or I could just take D1 with a super potential on C2. So each of these examples seems interesting to me. Um, here's an, another class of examples that I think is like super fun. So if we take the 6D story and the, uh, the chiral algebra for um, N equals two super conformal field theory with S P N um, gauge group and matter and So I'm going to take a beta gamma system in here. So if you get it right, this is anomaly free. For example, when n is 2, this is SL2 with uh, four fundamental hypermultiplets, which is conformal. Is that right? Am I getting the I, Yeah, okay, good. so I got it right. So, and you also notice, it looks like the OR symmetry group is, is SU4, but actually it's SO8, because the hypermultiplet is a symplectic vector space. This is SO8 OR symmetry. So this one has a nice <clears throat> candidate holographic jewel with a large n limit. So this is given by something C and I were studying recently, which is the type one E model on SL2C. So the Green Schwartz mechanism implies this only works when coupled to SO8. Homomorphic transcendence. And the type one means the, <clears throat> the closed string fields are much smaller. Only Only the actual Beltrami differential, not uh, uh, the other stuff. So, the <clears throat> so there's some fun story. You know, you can SO8 is picked out by the being anomaly free, both in the bulk and on the chiral algebra, and it looks like these these two things should be 
holographic jewel in the same way as the usual n equals four story. I'll stop there. I mean, there's, you can go on all day about potential interesting examples. Uh, and there are, there are other ones, but yes. mm -hmm. are, are there any interesting higher dimensional topological examples? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, finding examples where the answers were really interesting. Um, I suppose you could study the ADHM quantum mechanics as being a 3D theory instead of after local, after putting it in the, like before you put it in the Omega background. And that, that would be an interesting example. It's closer. I mean, it's pretty similar, really, but. So, and I suppose you could say the same thing for the n equals 4 chiral algebra. You can view that as being the Capuchin twist based on an omega background. So you could just compute the Capuchin twist in the large element. Which is also actually very, very interesting, I think. Flavor, sorry. You could, you could, I mean, adding on like n slash or k slash k supergroups is never going to change the anomaly. So you can always put that in. Um, but if this is what, <clears throat> this particular matter is what you would find from a D1 brain in the type 1. That might be good straight. So if you take the, the brain, let's call it like a D2 brain in the type 1 topological string, and so that's some kind of oriented fold wrapping all of C3. And you compute um, you compute the, the field theory in the matter. This is what you find. So the orient orientifold means you get this wedge two here, and also changes u from GLN to SBN. And the space filling us the eight space filling brains that cancel the anomaly give you. I think it's an interesting question to see how many uh, how many families of n equals two SCFTs can be realized in this. Point. 